This is the detailed step-by-step -step tutorial on how you can retouch your image using focus separation. And to follow along, I'll be leaving the link where you can get this whole file in the description below of this video. Let's jump right into it. And it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or you're a professional, you are going to learn something from this video. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate my background layer. So it's not advisable to work directly on your background layer. So first thing you have to do is to duplicate your background layer. So to duplicate your background layer, you can either click and drag your background layer to this plus icon right here, or you can just press Command J or Control J if you're using a Windows to duplicate your background layer. The next thing we are going to do, we are going to remove the blemishes from this image, All right? Now, there are different ways which you can actually use to remove blemishes from your image. Please pay close attention. Now, if you are on a deadline and you are in a hurry, what I advise you to do to remove the blemishes is to pick the spot healing brush to right here. And what the spot healing brush tool does is that it's very simple to use. All you have to do is just paint over any blemishes you want to remove and which will automatically remove the blemishes for you just like that as you can see just like so all right so see the before and the after the before and the after but i usually don't do this i use the focus separation method to remove my blemishes and i'm going to show you right now so i'm going to delete this layer and duplicate my background layer again by pressing on command j so once i do that i'm just going to come to my action right here and by the way if you need my action i'm giving that for free check the link in short below to download this action and also follow along or if you have any focus separation action or the retouching academy you can also use it it's going to work all right so i've got my action and just click on frequency separation system bit right here because this image is 16 bit all right so if you want to know if your image is 16 bit or 8 bit just come to your image right here you just click on mood and you're going to see if your image is 16 bit or 8 bit or 32 bit. So, right now, you can see mine is on 16 bit. If yours is on 16 bit, good. If yours is on 8 bit, good. So, if yours is on 8 bit, just click on the focus separation 8 bit right here instead of the 16 bit. So, I'm going to click on the 16 bit because this image is 16 bit. For the focus separation Gaussian blur videos, it might be confusing or complicated, but it doesn't have to be. What you should know is that if you want to retain textures on your image, use a higher blur radius. While if you want your image to be smooth, use a low focus separation blur radius. So for this image, I'm going to be using a focus separation blur radius of 10 and I'm going to click on OK. All right, so you can see right now, it opens this group for us and inside this group, we have the high frequency copy, we have the high frequency texture, we have the brush layer, which we are going to be using the mixer brush to do brush on. I'm going to explain that later in this video. And also we have the low frequency with contained textures. So by doing focus separation, we successfully separated the textures from the colors. So if we want to work on the textures, we are going to work in on the high frequency, which contains the textures. Or if we want to work on the colors, we are going to be working on the low frequency. Right? Now since blemishes consist of textures, we are going to be working on the high frequency copy right here, which is this first layer right here. And to remove the blemishes using focus separation, I want to pick the close stamp tool. Once you pick your close stamp tool, just make sure you're using a soft round brush, all right? Make sure your mode is on normal, passing the set to 100. You can use pen pressure if you're using a Wacom tab or any graphics tab. Also, my flow is on 100%, align is checked, and current layer is selected, all right? Now, to remove the blemishes, I'm just going to use my square bracket key to increase and decrease my brush size according to the blemishes I want to remove or according to the spots which I want to remove. So, it's very important if you want to remove a big spot increase your brush size to fit that spot which you want to remove all right while if you want to remove a small spot a small blemishes decrease your brush size to fit that small blemishes which you want to remove all right now since i want to remove these blemishes right here i'm just going to sample increase my brush size a little bit just press option to sample if you're using a mark and alternate to sample if you're using a windows so once you press alternate or option, you're going to see this target icon, this icon just showing on the screen. Now you're going to see it. So just click on any area which you want to sample from. So I'm going to sample from the close by area and just paint over that blemishes and it will automatically remove that blemishes for you. So the same thing, alternate or option to sample and just paint over that blemishes to remove it. Alternate or option to sample, paint over that blemishes to remove it. Alt or option to sample, Paint over the blemishes to remove it. Alt or option to sample. 
and just paint over the blemishes to remove it. Now, let me quickly show you what we've done so far. Just look at this place right here. So, see the before, you can see the blemishes right there, and the after, they are no longer there, the before and the after. So, just take your time to actually do this for the whole of your image. You don't have to watch the process. So, basically, I'm going to be doing this for the whole of the image. So, I'm going to press it alternate to sample and also decreasing and increasing my brush size with my square bracket key according to the parts of the image which I want to brush. All right, let's quickly see the before and after. So, see the before and the after. The before and the after. So, we've removed the blemishes from this image. So, if you are doing this, like I said earlier, actually take your time to remove the blemishes. Now, next I'm going to do, I'm going to create another focus separation again. And this time, I'm going to be using it to smooth out the skin. Right, I have to do that, I'll come back to my action, click on focus separation system bits, and use the radius of 10 again, and hit OK. Now, I'm just going to zoom in, pick my mixer brush tool, since we want to work on the color. Once I pick my mixer brush tool, make sure you're using the soft rank brush. Make sure this clean brush after its stroke is selected. If I paint now, you can see this place right here is on transparent. It's because this clean brush after its stroke is selected, all right? Now, my weight is on 30. My load is on 30. My mix is on 90. This mix doesn't really matter because this place right here is on transparent. My flow is on 20. This place right here is on 10. And sample only is selected. Now, the reason why sample only is selected is because we are going to be working on this empty layer right here, which says brush here. But if we were to work directly on the no focusing, we would have turned off this sample earlier if we want to work directly on the low frequency a color tone. But since we want to work on this empty layer, make sure sample layer is selected. Now, if you are wondering why I prefer to work on this empty layer right here, it's because if I actually make any mistake, I can actually pick my eraser tool and just erase that mistake. Whereas if I'm working directly on the low frequency and I make any mistake, if I just pick my eraser tool to erase that mistake, it's just going to erase the pixels right there. And I don't want that. What I have to do with that situation, I have to delete the low frequency portion and start all over again. So instead of going through all that stress, I just prefer to work on this empty layer right here. And if there's any mistake, I can just erase it with my eraser tool and start from that particular place. Or rather, just delete the whole empty layer and create another empty layer above the low frequency right here. So that's why I like working on this brush layer, which is an empty layer. Once you pick a mixer brush tool, before you start using it to brush on your image, make sure you turn off this high texture layer right here. So if I just turn it off, the image is going to be kind of blurry like this. Because right now we have only the color, the textures are no longer on the image, you have just the color. Whereas if I turn it back on, we are going to bring back the texture. If you turn it on and you try to use the mixer brush tool to brush, it's just going to spoil the image as you can see right here. It's spoiling the image because this high frequency layer right here is turned on. So I'm not going to undo that. Once I undo that, I'm just going to come to this layer again and just turn off this high frequency texture layer right here. And once I turn that off, I'm just going to brush on my shadow separately, brush on my highlight separately, and brush on my middle separately. So those parts that are shiny are the highlights, why those parts that are dark are the shadows, why those parts that are well exposed are the mittens. So if you are brushing, make sure you're not brushing your shadows into your highlights, or your highlights into your shadows, or your shadows into your mittens. And also, this one is very important, make sure you are increasing and decreasing your brush size according to the parts of the image you're actually working on. So if I want to work on these small highlights on the forehead, I'm just going to reduce my brush size with the square bracket key and just paint on only that highlight so it's there on the forehead. Also, if I want to work on the bigger portion, I'm going to increase my brush size and just, and just brush on the bigger portion of the image, just like that. So basically, that's what I'm going to be doing. So let's please see what we've done so far. Let's see the before and after. So this is the before you can see and the after. The before and the after. So basically, I'm going to do that for the whole of the image. All right, so let me just paint on this highlight on the nose. So you can see my brush size is a small brush. I just decrease my I just decrease my brush size to fit only those highlights on the nose. While you can see the shadow area on the nose, I just increase my brush size to fit that particular place. And I'm not brushing my highlights into my shadows. And also, I'm not brushing shadows into highlights. So just do this. And if you keep practicing, you are actually going to get good at it and get used to it. All right, so I'm going to brush on the shadow part like this. So you can always see your before and after so you can do what you're doing all right so this is my before and my after so far my before and my after so i'm just going to continue 
I can turn on the image just like this. Let's move to the before and after. Let me just turn this high frequency texture on. So let's see. So see the before and the after. The before and the after. And if I zoom in, you can see we still have the textures on the image, the before and the after. And also the image is looking smooth. So the before and the after. But if you want your image to be more smoother, you can use a loop focus operation block of about eight or nine. It's going to give you more smooth image. All right. The next I'm going to do, I'm just going to make the eyes pop. Now to do that, I'm just going to come from my action. You just click on as I hit white knee right here. Once I click on the eyes, I hit white knee. I'm just going to zoom in and just paint on the white part of the eyes. Just like that. So once you play that action, it was automatically do everything for you. All you have to do is pick your brush tool, make sure your foreground color is set to white and just paint on the white part of the eyes. All right. Also make sure you're using a soft hand brush and not a hard brush. So I'll do the same thing for this other eyes right here, like this. And also do the same thing for the teeth, like this. And let's see the before and after. So, so the before and after. And I feel it's looking too much. I'm just going to come to the opacity and just take down the opacity a little bit like so. Now this I'm going to do, I'm going to make the catch lights of the eyes more visible. So I'll come to my adjustment layer. If you can't find adjustment layer right here, just come to your windows, click on adjustment right here. It's going to open your adjustment layer for you. So I'll click on curves adjustment layer and just take this middle part up like this and just press or command I or control I if you're using the windows to inverse the mask. So once I invert that mask, it means I've hide that effect. Now to review that effect, I'm going to pick my normal brush tool and use a white brush to review. So black hides and white to review. So I'm going to paint on only the catch light on the eyes just to make it more brighter and more catchy. So see the before and the after. The before and the after. If it is too much, you can just reduce the opacity a little bit like so. Now still on making the eyes pop, next I'm going to do, I'm going to create a stamp visible layer by pressing the command option shift E or control shift alternate E to create a stamp visible layer. After that, I'm going to come to my action. Please get my action. It's for free. You are really going to enjoy it. So as I come to my action, I'm going to click on this on shampoo eyes and lip mask right here. Once I click on it, it's just going to do its thing and load the action for me. All right. Now what I'm going to do from here, I'm really going to zoom in on the eyes and just paint on only the eyes like this, just to make it pop and do the same thing for this other eyes, just to make it pop and also do the same thing for the lips just to make it pop just like that. All right, now let's see the before and after. So see the before, just take a look at the eyes, the before and the after, the before and the after. If it is too much, you can just reduce the opacity a little bit, just like that. And let me give you a quick bonus. So if I just zoom in on the eyes, you can see there are some hairs inside the eyes. Now, if you want to remove it, it's pretty easy. Just create another stamp visible layer, command option shift E, Ctrl Shift alternate E to create a visible layer. Just pick your remove tool. Once you pick your remove tool, just paint on any part of the image you want to remove. So for this one, it's just this hair inside the eye. So once you just select it, just click on good and it will automatically remove that hair for you inside the eyes and the result is plain and amazing. You can see it has removed it. So see the before and the after. And you can just look at these other eyes and see if you want to remove any hair. Just like that, and just going to remove it. Now, that's what I'm going to do for this image. I'm just going to crop this image for by five to fit to Instagram. So I'll come to my crop tool, come to the ratio, and just click on four by five, and just crop it to fit how I want it. So like this works for me. I'm going to hit OK. I'm just going to crop that image for me. So let me just group everything and show you where we started from and where we are right now. And by the way, to group, just hold um, the first layer, hold Shift, click on the last layer which you want to group. And just press or command G or control G to group. Now let's quickly see the before and after ourselves from and where we are right now. So this is the before and the after. The before and the after. And this is just a finite thing I want to show you inside my action. You can just add contrast to this image by coming on this action again and just click on reach tool right here. Once you click on reach tool, it's just going to add contrast to your image. So this part right here is optional. And if you feel it's too much. You can just come to your opacity and just reduce the opacity a little bit just like that. So see the before 
and the after. So I find this video useful and helpful. And if you want to learn how I process this software instead of flat tool, check out this video right here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay creative.